Um, so our subject today is hello from the other side. And uh, I actually, uh, I have to admit, uh, I just have to admit to you all that last uh, Sunday night, uh, I was really mad at God. And I don't think that in my entire Christian walk, I don't think I've ever been mad at God. In fact, I didn't even know what it was to be mad at God. But Saturday, I had gone to a conference and heard uh, one of our generation's prophet, a gentleman with the ministry of a prophet, uh, share, uh, not, not only teach, but share a little bit. And though I walked away encouraged, I also walked away absolutely upset. I mean, as I sat there and listened to him, hear the voice of God, I mean, just unbelievable that he would do things like call out a phone number and a name associated with the phone number, call out social security numbers, street addresses, and identify the person and, 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 and give last names, first names, children's names, cousins' names. And uh, so anyway, I, I went home and I was alone Sunday, uh, late afternoon, evening, I spent, I went home and uh, Deborah was here in Fairfield and I was so upset when I left church, I was mad in church, but when I left, y'all helped me stay calm, but when I left church, by the time I got home, I was fuming at God. In fact, I was so mad that I wrote God notes and left them on the kitchen table, and I went to bed that. I said, man, you know, Lord, it, it is unfair that I have served you all of this, all of these years, and I'm not even gonna tell you how long, because it'll date you, <laughs> but I've served you all of these years, and, and I go listen to this dude talk about how you give him social security numbers and phone numbers and addresses and city and states and all of that, and, and you spoke to Enoch, and you spoke to Moses, you spoke to Elijah, you spoke to Elisha. I mean, the list goes on. You spoke to Paul, you spoke to Peter, you spoke to John on the Isle of Patmos. I want you to speak like that to me at least a few times before I, I leave this earth. I mean, what's wrong with me? Have you ever felt that way? Yes. That God speaks to everybody but you? And yet we hear great teachings on hearing the voice of God and what it is to hear from God. And we leave and go, he, he doesn't talk to me that way. But what I found out is that the next morning God did begin to speak to me. I, I, he, a funny thing is, is that when you get mad at God, he doesn't always get mad back at you. Thank God for that. I think I can get it. But he knew I was really upset. So anyway, the next morning, God began to speak to me. And I, I want to give you just a couple of simple truths about hearing uh, the voice of God. And the first thing is, is that there is a difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Let me break it down this way. You see, in the Old Testament, God only spoke through prophets, uh, through those select few men and women that were anointed to hear his voice. God did not speak to people in general. So the population of Israel, his chosen nation, could not hear the voice of God. In fact, they could not experience the presence of God. It only came from a select few, and those select few were called prophets, and some of them were kings, like King David, King Solomon, where God would use the individual to speak to an entire nation. Then we come to the New Testament, and here is the difference. You see, because God has always wanted to speak to his people, not through a select few. Did you know that? When God created Adam, God created Adam for the purpose of communication. In fact, the Bible is very clear that the highlight of Adam's day was when God came personally during the cool of the day to walk with Adam in the garden. That was the reason Adam was created was to fellowship with God. That's why you and I are created. Have you ever wondered, what on earth am I doing here? What, why am I here? Why did God make me? Why did, why did God allow me to be born in this time, in this generation? Why did God do that? It wasn't because God had 
necessarily a purpose for you to fulfill, though that is partly true. It wasn't that God had just a ministry for you, though that too is partly true. But the real reason was God wanted to fellowship with you individually. That is the real reason. That was the reason all the way back to the time of Adam. God has never lost that. The problem is, is that through the Old Testament, because of sin, God could not communicate directly with people. Because man had sinned, and there was such a, a, a darkness to man that the Bible says that we could not stand in his presence lest we would die. So God spoke to people through his appointed few. Now we come to the New Testament, and Jesus changes all of that. The reason that Jesus came was to die for you and to die for me so that that darkness, that, that, that sin could be completely removed and there could be once again a direct fellowship with God the Father. That is the reason Jesus came. I know that the Bible says he healed the sick and he cast out demons and he did a lot of great things. But the reason for his coming was singular. It was to restore fellowship between you and I and God the Father once again. And he did that through his death on the cross. Now, now we, as we shared last week, I showed you the example of the dirty t-shirt and the clean t-shirt. Our righteousness is still as dirty rags. However, because of the death of Christ, God, when he looks at you, sees Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And because of that, he wants to fellowship and to communicate because there is no sin between you and I and him. There is no sin. There is no longer a barrier. And he wants to communicate. So in John chapter 16, let's go to John chapter 16, and we're reading verse 12 through 15. I'm going to read it first out of the NIV, and then I'm going to read it out of a translation I discovered called the God translation. So John chapter 16, verse 12 through verse 15, it says this. This is, this is Jesus speaking to the disciples, and he says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. Now that is good, I, and I really I enjoy that. But I found that in the God translation, let me, let me give it to you as it is translated there, and just in part. He says, he, says, he the Holy Spirit, he will speak what I say, and he will tell you what is to come. How many of you know that God does not want you to live in a vortex of not knowing what your future is all about? A lot of people are praying, God, show me what my future is. Well, if the Bible says that the Holy Spirit's job is to show you and to keep you informed what is to come. Not, in, not, not just what is to come spiritually or scripturally, but is to, what is to come within your own life. Because God wants you to be informed. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what I say and make it known to you. All that the Father says is mine. And that is why the Spirit will receive from me what I say and will make it known to you. The Holy Spirit's function, the Holy Spirit's job is simply to tell you and I what Jesus is saying. Now I know that in Pentecostal circles we make a whole to-do out of about, uh, spiritual gifts. I know that we like to talk about the gifting of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 
and I get that. But let me tell you, I, I've come to the conclusion that all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit all of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, all of that that we see in Pentecostal circles today is simply, it serves one and only one purpose. And that purpose is God trying to show you his love and his interest in you. That's the only reason. Now, we can make it more than that, but, but I believe truthfully and scripturally that is the only reason we have public ministry of the Holy Spirit. So if a prophet stands up and begins to prophesy to you, or in general, what is, what is the, why is the prophet doing that? Why that word of prophecy? It is God's way of saying, I am so interested in you. Let me tell you something personally about yourself that I know, just to show you how interested I am. Just to show you that you are no mistake. Just to show you that you being here today is not a mistake. I'm going to prove it to you and I'm going to speak to you through somebody else that doesn't know those things about you. It is God revealing his love to you and I. That is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is never to draw attention to himself. In fact, the Holy Spirit does not even talk about himself. The Holy Spirit's focus is to draw attention to Jesus and let you know that Jesus has his eye on you and he loves you to the extent that he has the very hair on your head numbered. And some of you lost a few this morning in the shower. And he knows exactly how many you lost. But God wants to be heard. Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse 27, he said, my sheep Listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. All right, I'm going to read it again. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. So if you're sheep today, and you are living for Christ, and you've asked Christ into your life, and you are a sheep, you know the voice of of the shepherd. Whether, whether you think you do or not, you know the voice of the shepherd. He said, my sheep know my voice. They know my voice. It's kind of like a newborn baby. You know that the newborn knows the mother's voice before it is ever born? Yes. Before that baby even comes into this world, it has already identified the mother's voice before even seeing its mother, it already knows intuitively the voice of its parent, of its mother. In fact, that baby will be bond, bond to the mother more than any other family member through the, all the days of its life, unless the mother does something to break the bond. Because it knew her voice before it came out of the womb. Those of us that have been born again, Jesus used that illustration, being born again, we know his voice coming out of the womb. We automatically know it. We know his voice to the degree he knew the Father's voice. Does that make sense? If you read the Gospels, you'll find that Jesus was so in tune with God the Father that he made statements like, whatever I see the Father doing, that's what I do. He made another statement, whatever I hear the Father say, that's what I'm speaking. He was so in tune with hearing God the Father's voice that he said of himself, whatever God is doing, that's what I'm doing. That's, that's some contact right there. And then Jesus turns around and he says, you will know my voice and, 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 and you will follow me because you know my voice. That is powerful. Think of what life would be like if we truly knew his voice and followed it daily. It's amazing. The possibilities are, are endless. But it only comes through knowing his voice. You see, Jesus said some crazy stuff. 
And we sit back and we wonder, how can it be? Let me read a couple of them. He said this, he said, uh, he said, again, I say unto you, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. Now the question I ask is, how, how is the Father sending him? He said, as the Father's sending me, I'm sending you. So how is the Father sending Jesus? How did the Father send you? Well, he said that in John 20, 21. But then if you roll back to the beginning of the book of John, in John chapter 3 and verse 34, this is how the Father sent him. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit with, to him. God gives the Spirit without limit. So how did God send Jesus? He sent him with the Holy Spirit without limitations. Jesus turns around and he says, I'm sending you now the same way God the Father sent me. So you have the Spirit now without limitation. Do you know there's no limitation on the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? There is absolutely no limitation on his ability to speak to you and to speak to me. The only limitations are what we said. That's why Jesus went on to say, and he said, Verily, verily, I say to you, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. There is a problem with church today. I am sorry, but I don't see greater things than these. I don't see us doing greater things than Jesus did. And yet he said, he said, greater things will you do because I go to the Father. Hidden in this verse is a key. And I'm going to show it to you. John chapter 14 and verse 12. Jesus said, truly, I tell you. Listen carefully, this is the key. Truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing, and they will do even greater works than these because I go to the Father. Notice he didn't say, whoever believes in miracles. We teach just believe in the miracle. He didn't say whoever believes in the prophetic word. He didn't say whoever believes in the giftings of the Holy Spirit. He simply said whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. You know, the difference between the, old, the New Testament and us in our generation is simply this. When you look at the life of of Peter. Peter walked with Christ for three years. He believed in Jesus. Paul comes along and Jesus confronts Paul on the road and, and knocks him off his horse and he speaks to him and Paul has an encounter with Jesus. Paul believes in Jesus and because of their belief in Jesus greater works they were doing. We invite people to be born again, to give their heart to the Lord. Now stay with me for a minute, because this is a key. We invite people to give their heart to the Lord, to accept the Lord, to get saved, but they never have an encounter with Jesus. <clears throat> you can get saved up here, and you can give your heart to the Lord up here. But it's until you meet the real guy and you have an encounter with him, you will never do the things that he does because your faith will always be in something else other than him. In fact, this is the what I felt God was speaking to me. I felt like God was saying, stop putting your eyes on the gifts. Stop putting your eyes on everything else 
Keep your eye on the giver mm. and don't ever look away and what I do, you will do. As mm. long as your eye is on the giver. Oof. What I'm doing, you will do because it's me who's doing it. That's good. It has nothing to do with you That's anyway. Good. Mm. You follow my lead and you will do what I'm doing because I haven't stopped doing it. Just Ooh, you Jesus, know. Jesus. I'm still doing this stuff. Mm. Praise Him. You can sit there all day long in a yoga position and wait to hear the Spirit of God, but it only comes because our eyes are on Jesus Christ. You know what it did to me also? It caused me to say, I want to keep having an encounter with the real guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, forget all this church stuff. I want to know Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Forget all the, all, everything we do and talk about and all that stuff. I want to know Jesus Christ. Because when it's all said and done, he is the important one. He's the one that changes my life. He's the one that keeps it all real. Now I want to give you a couple of simple things. Whisper, talk, and yell. How does God speak to us? I believe he whispers, he talks, and he yells. God whispers more than anything else. And when he whispers, he whispers deep within our spirit. That is the voice of God. There is a discerning of what is my voice and what is the voice of God deep within my spirit. In fact, when Moses was going to have an encounter with God, you remember that God first brought the wind and he brought the earthquake as Moses was up in a cave and he shook the mountains and rocks split and things broke and there was this mighty force of God and Moses was thinking, surely this is going to be the voice of God. But God didn't speak. Then the Bible says that in a still, small voice, God spoke to Moses. I believe that, Mo that God was saying to Moses, this is how I prefer to communicate. I prefer to whisper to your spirit. My prayer is, God, help me to be more sensitive to the whispering in my spirit, because God is always talking. Help me to be more sensitive to the whispering in my spirit so I can, I can clearly define what you are saying in me apart from what I say to myself. The second way that God speaks is God speaks audibly. He talks. Now, I have never heard the audible voice of God. I've heard stuff close to it when he's thundered in my spirit. But I did not hear it with my ear. I heard it because he thundered within my spirit. I am here in this church today because years back he spoke and thundered in my spirit when I asked him a question and he spoke and gave clear direction before I ever knew anything about this church. He had already told me about it. Are you with me? How does God speak? He speaks when he uses other people. It could be that right now God is using me and these scriptures to speak to you. God speaks through other people. God speaks through circumstances. God will speak through situations. When, when you go into something, ask the Lord, are you trying to speak to me through this? Because it might be that God is trying to speak something to your life as you are going through something. It is designed, it has a purpose to it because God is trying to speak to you. Do you know that God also speaks through creation? We don't think about that. 
We are sometimes so busy, we don't see creation, or we just see it and don't even pay attention to what it is saying. In fact, let me read Psalms 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of His hand. God speaks through creation. He speaks to you. I think I, I told this story probably six, eight months ago. Uh, but I was going through a real trying time in my life. And some of you are going to think it's cuckoo. But uh, anyway, so I was going through a real trying time in my life. And I was asking the Lord, God, do you even care uh, what I'm going through? Because I do not see a light at the end of this tunnel. And, and, and I, as I was going through it, so anyway, so, so uh, I, I go home. And uh, I'm sitting at the kitchen table. Uh, actually working on a message. And a bluebird flies up to the patio door and starts staring at me through the patio door. He's watching, he or her, I don't know, watching me, and I'm watching it. And I said, well, I'm going to walk to the door, and the bird's going to fly away. So I walk to the door, and the bird won't fly away. He just keeps watching me. <laughs> Felt like God was saying, I'm watching you. Even through my creation, I'm watching you. So I walked past the door into the kitchen, and he tried to follow me, but he got beyond the door, couldn't see me. So I walked back to the door. He walks back to the door, and he's still watching me. So I said, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is really crazy. So I said, I'm going to go outside and meet the bird. So I go outside. And the bird flies up, up to the tree, and he sits in the tree watching me. So I said, so I, anyway, I had some stuff to do around the yard. So I'm going to go do some stuff, and I'm doing my thing. And I noticed the, board, the bird now is on the roof line following me everywhere I go, watching me. And I walk back, and, it, oh, and, and, and I walk, I'm like, this bird is stalking me. <laughs> I kid you not, I've never been stalked by a bird before. So anyway, so I go, I go back into the kitchen, and I said, surely the bird's going to leave now. No, the bird's back at the door watching me. And it was as though God said to me at that moment, I so care about you that even my creation will watch you. God speaks through his creation. When you see a full moon, when you see cloud formations, when you see some, that sometimes that is the time to say, God, you orchestrate, you are wonderful, you are, you are mighty, you are, you created all of this. Surely you have little old me in the palm of your hand. And this is only a part of the world that I see. This is happening around the globe, God's creation. This is happening in galaxies, upon galaxies, God's creation. Surely you have my life in your hand. The last way that God speaks is he yells. God spoke to Balaam through a donkey. God, when he wanted to get Paul's attention, he appeared to him and knocked him off his horse and caused him to go blind. God, when God wants to yell, he has the ability to yell. You know what my prayer is? I never want to be so deaf that you have to yell at me. I don't want to be knocked down like that to get my attention. I do not want you to yell. But God has the ability to be heard when he wants to be heard. All right. I'm going to give you the hindrances and we're going to close. The hindrances to hearing from God. One, you can get so busy that you don't have time. You know, there's a little phrase in the gospel when it talks about Jesus. It says, he often got away to a lonely place. God spoke that to me one day when I was saying, how come I can't get, I don't feel close to you. And I was reading that in Luke and it says that Jesus often went away to a lonely place, often. And God said, it's because you don't get away with me often. See, we can get so busy that God simply says, I'll wait. I'm not chasing you. 
I'll wait. When you get unbusy, you and I will have fellowship. The next thing is that we can be so preoccupied. We can be so preoccupied that God will not speak. Let me, let me, let me break it down this way. If I'm trying to converse with Deborah, and she is insisting on texting, I'll wait. I am not competing with her cell phone. I am more important than that text. And if I'm not, I'll wait till I become. Do you know that that's what God does? He is more important than our preoccupation. But if we're going to be preoccupied, he will wait until we give him the place of importance. So sometimes we got to stop the noise. We got to put the electronics down. Amen. We got to put the phone down and stop peeking at it. What's my Facebook doing? Who wants to be trending now? We need to put the phone down. We need to turn the TV off, and we need to have some quiet time, undistracted with God. If you'll do that, you might find that He starts speaking to you. Because you gave him a place of being more important. You're not preoccupied. That's right. mm, praise him. God, don't read text, so don't text your prayers to Almighty. He wants to hear him. He's a little old school. He wants to hear him from your lips. The second is, uh, third is, we don't listen. Have you ever talked to somebody and they're not listening to you? They're looking at you, but they're not listening to you. You can always tell they're not listening to you because when you take a breath, they jump in and ask the strangest thing. <laughs> it's like it's like you can be talking to somebody about your relationship with them, and I think we need we need, we need to be better friends, and, and you and I, and I, I accept you, man. And you, you know, what do you think? And then, uh, I think I'm having bologna sandwich for lunch. <laughs> you didn't hear me. How many of you know that when that happens, you want to stop talking? When God speaks, he expects to be heard. But if it's clear we're not listening, he doesn't waste time. He'll just be quiet. The last is we talk too much. Do you know why you talk too much? Because your mind works faster than your mouth. In fact, I used to know the stats. I, I try to remember, but I can't remember, and I forgot where I wrote it all down. But I did a study a while back on, on the power of the mind. And the mind is so fast. Well, let me give you an example. While I'm talking to you now, many of you, when I start a sentence, you've already finished it in your mind. <coughs> You've already finished what I'm going to say. You've already, if we were engaging together, you would have already thought of a response. So while I'm talking, you finish what I'm saying, even though you don't know what I'm going She'll finish what I'm saying. And I go, you don't even know what I was going to say. And she goes, yes, I do. You were going to say this. Even if she's right, I'll lie to make up something. <laughs> Just to prove my point. You don't know what I was going to say. So listen to me. So while somebody's speaking, we finish what they're going to say, we think of an answer, and then we plan dinner. They're not even done talking, and we've done all of that that quick. That's how fast your mind is. You're doing it right now. Some of you are thinking, I'm going to have a hamburger for lunch, and I'm going to have fries, and, and we're going to go over here. I think I'm going to go over there. And you're still listening to me, but your mind is that fast. The problem is, is that because our mind is that fast, we tend to want to complete people's sentences. We tend to want to jump in. You know, the, 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 the Solomon said that a man who gives an answer before hearing the question is a fool. Yeah. But we all want to do it, right? We all want to play the fool. Well, I know what you're going to say. Let me give you the answer. Speed it up. That's what we do. The Bible says you're chop, a fool. Chop. Even if you know what they're going to ask or what they're going to say, it's time to listen. You know, sometimes people pray too much. 
Now listen carefully. I'm not talking about being in a place of prayer. I'm talking about they equate praying with talking and they just want to talk God's ear off. They get before the Lord and they got 800 things they want to remind him about. And, and, and it, it's kind of like somebody walking up to you and just going a mile a minute. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you haven't even got the chance to respond. David used the phrase, he used the phrase, Selah. Mm -hmm. Selah Sela. simply <laughs> means think about it. <laughs> to think about it, <laughs> to ponder it, to be quiet, to contemplate, to pause, and to stop. Selah. He used that phrase 75 times in the book of Psalms. Out of all of David's songs, 75 times, he would end the song with, don't speak, think about it. Don't give me a response, think about it. Sometimes we need to get before the Lord. I've started a new practice because I've been guilty of talking too much. You see, I came from the old, the old Pentecostal school. You gotta, you gotta pray it out to get God's attention. You know that before you go before the Lord, He knows what you're gonna say. He's not impressed with how much you can wail and use the King James language on him. <laughs> oh, my great Father, Thou who art in heaven, oh, glorious be Thy name. He's not impressed. He doesn't even speak King James. I'm sorry for those of you that are King James Bible <laughs> 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 Actually speaks all languages. <laughs> and he's not even so much listening to the words that roll off your mouth. He's looking into your heart. See, if you're saying one thing, but your heart is saying something different, he's reading your heart. And I've started this practice. I've started the practice of saying less and listening more. So to me, Prayer, in fact, I do it the majority of the time I spend in prayer. I say very little, but I do a whole lot of listening to what God wants to say. Because he already knows what I'm going to pray before I pray. And I'd rather listen and give him a chance to speak back. I promise you this, if you will do that, if you will go before the Lord... Put the distractions away and spend some time just sitting, listening. He will begin to speak deep within your spirit. He will talk to you. He will talk to you through his words. If you read his word, read his word in a quiet place and he will speak to you through it. God wants to speak and he wants to be heard. The only reason we don't hear from God is because we either are too busy, we're preoccupied, we don't listen, or we talk too much. It is never his fault. Jesus said, and he made it very clear, God wants to communicate. As he sent me, Jesus said, as he sent me, so I'm sending you the same way, with the same measure of the Holy Spirit, to hear from and to be close to God the Father. Whatever Jesus is saying, the Holy Spirit, he said, is repeating it to us verbatim. <clears throat> I believe he has a lot to say. I believe he is saying a lot. And the Holy Spirit is trying to communicate it. But we either are too busy, preoccupied, or we don't listen. So, back to my being mad at God on Sunday night and writing God notes about all the people he talks to but me. <laughs> and going to bed mad and waking up in the morning saying, I don't even know if I'm going to pray. You're not, you're not communicating anyway. As I began to quietly 
made a cup of coffee, said, I am just going to sit here and get over my anger. And as I did, God began to speak to me and say, I'm always talking to you, but you're not always listening. I'm always talking to you, but sometimes you are too busy for me, but you expect me to just, out of, out of the air, speak something to you. Why don't you stop for a minute? And oh, by the way, when you're spending time with me, but you keep checking Facebook, I don't like that. <laughs> you don't like it when your wife does it. What makes you think I like it when you do it? Is it okay that you get on her for doing it, but it's, it's, it's okay that you do that with me? How about putting it away? I'm trying to talk to you. And I found that when I did, God had a whole lot to say. You know that when I left later in the afternoon, I felt just great. Because I had spent time in the presence of the Lord. And he has a way of making you feel great. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. <clears throat> Father, we're, thank you for your word this morning, Lord. I pray mm. that today, today, if we're not hearing from you, that today would be a new beginning, a mark of day of change, Lord. Where we will begin to spend that time with you. We begin to listen to you, begin to let you speak deep within our hearts, our spirits. Father, let you speak through nature and through other people. We'll always be looking to detect the voice of God speaking into our lives. I pray that you will help us to be those kind of people in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.